A couple of new things that have come in. This is not quite as recently as uh, the next thing, but this is a, the idea of employee shares. This idea is that employees might get some shares on the basis that they give up some of their employment rights. When this was first announced, Mike Truman, uh, writing in uh, Taxation, I think it was Mike Truman, said um, it was possibly the most stupid idea he'd, um, he'd ever come across. And he was, he was criticised uh, very badly for that. So he wrote again about it a couple of weeks later and he said uh, he, he would, re he would uh, change the remarks. He would say he would remove the word possibly. Um, he still thought it was the most stupid idea he'd ever heard of. But actually, I'm, I'm not so sure it is. Um, what happens here, if the employee is, is, is uh, willing to give up certain employment rights, you can give them some shares in your business without there being a tax consequence. In fact, there's no income tax charge on the first £2,000 worth of shares. Now, bear in mind, if it's a small amount of shares, they'll be discounted. So the £2,000 value may be sort of a reasonable percentage in shares if you're looking at the outcome on a future sale event. The maximum you can give an employee is £50,000 worth, and there'd be income tax on the additional value over £2,000 if you gave them more than £2,000 worth. But on a disposal for that employee, those shares will be tax-free. Well, that's, that's amazing, isn't it? I mean, if you could give somebody 10% of a company, a small start-up company, for no tax consequence, and when they sell it on a, on a disposal, it's tax-free, I would say that's a pretty extraordinary outcome. What are the rights you're giving up? Maybe there's a big problem here, then. Um, unfair dismissal rights. Apart from automatically unfair reasons like discrimination or health and safety reasons. Statutory redundancy pay you're, you're, you're giving up. Uh, flexible working or time off to train. And that's it. For most people working in the OMB sector, um, most of that isn't worth very much anyway. Sorry, I shouldn't, I shouldn't say that. Uh, but I'll, I would say that there's a certain amount of truth in that. You have to have a um, written statement of terms to the employee to tell them what the employment rights consequences of their taking these shares is and they must re receive independent advice. And obviously you've got to value the share. But other than that, it's a pretty easy thing to set up. Having said that, there are very few takers. There are very few people who have actually taken this up, option up. But it looks to me to be a pretty exciting thing to try and do. This year, this is so new that I don't know enough about it yet. Finance Act 2004, Employee Ownership Trusts. You can have a CGT, Capital Gains Tax Disposal, of your company to an Employee Ownership Trust. So if you want to exit your business, and you don't necessarily want to pass it on to the next generation of the family, and you can engineer a sale into an employee-owned trust, you can do that free of tax. You might be able to do that by selling the shares and then paying a dividend into the trust, and the trust could actually pay your proceeds. There are real planning opportunities here. And also, once that's the case, once that's in place, this company can make tax-free bonus payments of up to £3,600 per annum per employee, and they're free of tax to the employee. So I think there's um, a lot of planning opportunities here. Uh, you can't just use the bonus pay payments as a, as a replacement for, for salary, and there's got to be um, certain conditions met. There's a partition, participation requirement, uh, equality requirement, all the rest of it. Uh, I'll go through each of them in turn. The indirect employee ownership requirement is just that the trust must own a controlling interest in the shares. So in other words, it's got to own more than 50%. All relevant employees must be eligible to participate, so you can't have some employees getting the bonus and some not. Um, but you can impose a minimum employment period, which was 12 months. You could say that nobody can get their bonus unless they've been with the company 12 months. You can't have the bonus um, determined by anything other than remuneration, length of service, or hours worked. So you can't have sort of spurious reasons, hair colour, who I like, whether or not you've got a tattoo, that kind of thing. It's got to be on something sensible. The last thing I'm going to cover, a very, very quick flip through other tax saving ideas that are very, very easy to set up, and then I promise you I will stop. First thing is to look at the nursery voucher scheme. Now, the nursery voucher scheme is going to be phased out from sometime next year, autumn 2015, I think. And it's going to be replaced with a new government scheme where you can get 20% contribution from government on um, childcare costs but it'll, it'll only be available to those people who aren't receiving any kind of tax credit, which may actually be much worse than the current scheme, because if you're, you can get tax credits up to quite high rates of salary. 
So the nursery voucher scheme, as it is at the moment, might be a much better option. And bear in mind that from next autumn, you won't actually be able to get involved in a nursery voucher scheme anymore. So if this is going to be better, or if you're not going to be able to benefit from the government scheme next year, you need to get into one of these quickly. These are the savings per annum, per employee, if you're in this scheme and if you joined pre-2011 when the rules changed. If you're a basic rate taxpayer, being in a, um, a nursery voucher scheme can save you £1,100 a year in cash. If you're a higher rate payer, £1,400. And if you're an additional rate payer, £1,500. If you only got into the scheme after 2011, those savings are reduced for higher and additional rate payers down to £714 and £646. If anybody doesn't know what I'm talking about, this is a scheme whereby the company contracts with a provider of, of childcare up to £55 a week rather than you having to pay it out of the taxed money. That's uh, what I said about tax free childcare, so I won't uh, bother going on about it again. Long service awards as well. If somebody's uh, been in your business more than 20 years, you can give them a gift worth £50 for every year of service. And you can repeat the award after another 10 years. So if they've been with you 30 years, you can give them an award worth 30 years, or 30 times um, £50 as well. But they must have been there at least 20 years. Staff suggestions. My favourite bit of legislation. Anybody not seen me talk about this uh, before? I'm sorry if you have, but uh, it is my favourite. Because if somebody makes a suggestion, you can give them an award for, for that suggestion. But it must relate to the, your activities, well, quite obviously. Uh, it must be a suggestion that the employee couldn't reasonably have been expected to make, and it can't be made at a meeting specially convened for the purposes of proposing suggestions. So whatever you do, don't propose such a meeting is held. But after that, you can give somebody the lower of £5,000, 50% of the expected first year savings, and 10% of the expected first 10 year savings. Now I would say that the, the presence of the word expected means that this is some kind of prospectively applied test. You're not looking at things with the benefit of hindsight and saying, how much did we save after 10 years, or how much did we save after, after one year? You're saying, what do we expect to save? So as long as our expectations are reasonably high, that might be the lower number, mightn't it? I mean, you know, I think you're going to have to be sensible about it if somebody says, well, why don't we, why don't we wash up the teaspoons less often? And you say, well, that's a brilliant idea. I think that's going to save us millions. Um, here's £5,000. I don't think you're really going to get away with that on the next PAYE visit. But if there's something sensible that they say, then th there may be scope here. You can give an encouragement award, in all cases, up to £25, no matter how stupid <laughs> the suggestion is. So if somebody says, why don't we put jam on the carpet? You could say, no, I don't think we'll do that, but here's £25, thank you for playing. Now, we did say that to one of our clients, and they said, well, couldn't we just, um, couldn't we just pay somebody's entire salary like that because they could just keep making <laughs> suggestions? And I, I don't, think, don't think that's really going to work. But I'd have to say, I, I did struggle to find a legislative bar of it, uh, but I, I don't think it's worth trying. The last thing is to talk quickly about pensions, pension for sac salary sacrifice. If somebody is making pension contributions of their own into their own scheme and they will be getting tax relief on their, on their contributions, you can actually save cash by making the uh, contribution via the employer and the employer claiming tax relief on it and not paying the salary instead to the employee. The savings are there per £1,000 pre-tax uh, scheme funding. If you want to skip fund the scheme for an additional £1,000, if the personal rate is 20%, the overall saving on that £1,000 is 339 That gradually drops down depending on the personal rate of the employee. But really and truly, I, I put that in to remind you about auto-enrolment. This is the last slide. Auto-enrolment, as you all know, has been going on for some time. There's a TV campaign where everyone says, I'm in, I'm in. And large employers have already what's known as staged. Their staging date has passed and they're already in auto-enrolment, they already have to have auto-enrolment schemes. For smaller employee employers with up to sort of 50 employees, staging dates are starting around about now and into next year. So if you haven't done anything about that, it's time to do something about it. Okay. Barnes Rove has uh, a sort of partner organisation, Generation Financial Services, who we are using to help us with auto-enrolment auto needs of our clients. So if anybody wants to talk to us about that, please do so and actually shy 
Patel from Generation is here today as well if you wanted to speak to him today about auto enrolment issues. But that's all I wanted to say about that. And that is it. So if anybody's got any, got any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Other than that, thank you very much for coming.